we have popa from uh, northwestern university uh, just north of chicago in the united states he's speaking to us on d modules in birational geometry okay thank you for the introduction and uh, thanks to all those involved for uh, giving me the chance to speak here um, I should say that the bar was set quite high by my wife Laura's talk yesterday, so you know the stakes are pretty high in the family. Um, so um, the topic of my lecture is how um, the theory of mixed touch modules can be used to attack some problems of a really concrete flavor in complex and birational geometry. Um, and in fact, I thought I'd start by giving you a sense uh, of what some of these questions are. Um, so here's a short list, just a sample list of some basic problems that we can uh, now solve using this theory, um, especially in works with uh, Mustaza or Schnell and uh, others, in fact, and uh, where we don't really know how to um, approach um, these problem by, um, problems by um, more elementary techniques. Okay, so some were quite well-known conjectures. Um, I'll be very brief now, but I will return to some of these questions toward the end in more detail. Okay, so there we go. Um, first, something um, very classical sounding. For instance, we could bound the geometry of the set of isolated singular points on a hypersurface of fixed degree, uh, points of a given multiplicity m. Um, so by this I mean especially we can bound the number of conditions that they impose on um, hypersurfaces of arbitrary degree and especially say when they start imposing independent conditions on hypersurfaces. Um, something of a similar flavor related to multiplicities is that we could um, give an optimal bound for the multiplicities of points on um, theta divisors on principally polarized abelian varieties when uh, these singularities are isolated and um, also have a proposal for how to do this in general. This is a problem with a uh, pretty long history, something that I will come back a little bit uh, uh, to towards the end of the lecture. Um, something of a very different flavor. Um, now, on smooth projective varieties of general type, we can show that um, every holomorphic one form um, must vanish at at least one point and have a um, similar statement, an analogous statement in arbitrary Kodara dimension. And in fact, very much related to this, um, it follows from this uh, previous statement here, um, one obtains uh, the basic fact that there are no smooth morphisms from varieties of general type to um, abelian varieties. Okay. Um, in yet another direction, and this is a little bit harder to explain uh, briefly, but let me just say that uh, we can uh, treat the hyperbolicity of base spaces of families with maximal variation in a very general setting. So um, you can, for instance, think of um, uh, families that are parameterized by sub-varieties of moduli, but really here I want to say that we want to go beyond this setting to families um, where um, the fibers vary maximally in birational moduli and show that these, uh, the base spaces of such families are um, hyperbolic in various senses. So for instance, they're of log general type with respect to um, a compactification or you know, they're even Brody hyperbolic. There are steps towards the Kobayashi hyperbolicity of such spaces and so on. This is again something that I'll come back to um, towards the end of the lecture. And in a very different direction, maybe more algebraic or a more d-module theoretic, um, for a function on a smooth variety x, we could look at the so-called bernstein sato polynomial. It's known that this polynomial has a negative 1 as a root always, and so we can, by getting rid of um, this root, we can also concentrate on what's sometimes called the reduced bernstein sato polynomial. Um, it's a fundamental result of Kashivara that uh, the roots of the bernstein sato polynomial are negative rational numbers. Um, one of them, uh, the largest root, in fact the negative of the largest root, is well known to be equal to uh, what's called the log-canonical threshold of the uh, hypersurface F. So this is another important invariant of singularities that can be computed uh, by, from discrepancies on any resolution of singularities. And similarly, we can um, give a bound in terms of uh, such invariance of resolution of singularities for the largest root of the reduced bernstein sato polynomial. This is something that uh, 
Saito um, often calls, um, there's an invariant that Saito often calls the micro-local log canonical threshold of F. Okay, so these are various directions in which the tools can be applied. As I said, uh, the common theme for looking at such problems is that uh, they're addressed by using Morihiko Saito's theory of mixed Hodge modules. And I want to say a few words about what this is, at least uh, heuristically at the beginning. There are various ways of um, thinking about it. Um, for instance, you could think of it as being a, sort of a big generalization of the theory of variations of Hodge structure in the presence of singularities. So these could be, you know, in the geometric case, could be singularities of maps, or uh, if you want singularities on, of connections, on sheaves, or even singularities of spaces, though I won't get too much into this aspect uh, in this talk, okay? Or, coming from the other direction, you can think of it as being a sort of more, more manageable case, at least for the problems that I'm interested in, of the general theory of filtered D modules, where we can use more tools from the theory of, uh, from Hodge theory, from birational geometry, to attack problems like the ones I explained earlier. Okay, so, um, all right, so uh, let me say, actually, let me go into more details now. Um, on a smooth complex variety, we denote uh, by dx the sheaf of differential operators. So if you want the local coordinates, it's generated by functions and by partial derivatives. And this sheaf has a natural filtration by the order of the differential operator. So this is what I denote here by fk of dx, this differential operator is of order at most k. And by a d module, I mean an ox module um, that also carries an action of this sheaf of differential operators. So it's a module over the algebra dx. But in fact, I want to equivalently think about it in this form, right? This is the uh, form in which I'm going to use them in this talk. Um, there's this OX module has a connection-like operation, so C linear and satisfies the Leibniz rule, which also behaves like an integrable connection, right? So it's square, it's of square zero. But it's important to emphasize that M is not necessarily a vector bundle. I mean, vector bundles with flat connections are a special example of this theory. Okay, and in fact, we also want filtrations on these D modules. Um, this is a key point in this theory. So in, um, actually, what's called a good filtration, we want to put on such D modules. So these are Z-indexed increasing filtrations that are compatible with uh, the filtration on differential operators in this sense. Okay, so fk of uh, differential operators times fl on m is always contained in fk plus l of m. And then we want to impose other good properties that I won't get into, except maybe mention one of them, that I require these fl of m to be coherent sheaves. Okay, and since I mentioned variations of Hodge structure earlier, um, may help be, may be helpful to keep in mind that this condition here is a sort of a generalization of what's called Griffith's transversality in the world of variations of Hodge structure. Okay, and what's a typical example that's not a vector bundle? Well, we could fix a hypersurface in the variety X and then look at the sheaf of functions um, that are regular away from D but are allowed to have poles of arbitrary order along D. And this is denoted by OX star D, it's a union of these line bundles. And locally, if you choose a defining equation for D, then this is simply localization along this equation, localization of functions along this equation, right? So. By the quotient rule, it naturally carries an action of differentiation, so it's naturally a dx module. And it also has a very simple filtration to consider, namely the filtration by the order of the pole uh, with a convention that I uh, wrote here. But in fact, as you may imagine, for our purposes, this is a bit too naive of a filtration. In fact, it's the right filtration to consider if and only if d is um, a smooth divisor. And in general, we want something that has more Hodge theoretic meaning, that, that sees more of the singularities of D. And this is precisely the kind of filtration that will come from the theory of mixed Hodge modules. Okay, so um, let's uh, move a little bit towards that. Um, but in, first, uh, there's one more uh, gadget that I need to introduce in order to say more about Hodge modules, namely uh, the Durham complex of a filter D module. So. Um, because we're looking at, a, um, at an integrable connection-like operation here, we can iterate it to get a complex, a complex out of it, just like in the world of flat vector bundles. Um, and moreover, because we have a filtration on M, which is compatible with the filtration on differential operators, we can actually filter this Durham complex. So I could put here um, Fk of M, and then in this position I would have Fk plus 1, and so on, all the way to Fk plus N. 
Um, I only wrote down the associated graded. So if we write by, uh, if we denote by GER KFM the associated graded of the D module, then this induces associated graded objects on the DRAM complex, right? And they look like this. Uh, what's special though is that, and this is a well-known fact, when you pass to the associated graded, the C linear maps become OX linear. So now we're actually in the presence of a bounded complex of coherent sheaves on the variety X. And these, is, th these are tools that are algebraic geometers like very much. In fact, uh, we can take uh, coherent hypercohomology of these complexes and so on. So uh, these are the main objects by means of which we'll do algebraic geometry you know, that, uh, towards the you know, questions that I was um, pointing out at the beginning. So what is a Hodge module? So I said I'll take uh, the point of view in this talk that there is a special class of uh, filter D modules. And in fact, I'll kind of abusively just restrict to this, uh, to this picture. So I'm just going to call a Hodge module in this lecture a special filter D module, so they, you know, they satisfy all these nice properties that we heard, for instance, uh, about in uh, Professor Shapira's lecture. The regular holonomic D modules, they have a good filtration and they satisfy uh, some special properties. Um, if we're looking at a point, then we want to think of these as just being a complexification of a given uh, rational Hodge structure. If the dimension of the uh, variety X is um, strictly positive, then they're defined by some sort of inductive conditions on the dimension of the support uh, of the D module. So um, this induction is done by means of uh, these functors of nearby and vanishing cycles, which can also be defined just you know, analogous to those that we know from topology. They can be defined in the world of um, filtered D modules and uh, with, by means of uh, the, uh, what's called the Kashivara Malgrange V filtration. And these nearby and vanishing cycles, um, they have further filtrations by monodromy. And finally, the associated graded objects with respect to these filtrations are supported in lower dimension. For them, we impose the condition that they belong to this category of Hodge modules. Okay, and then there are other conditions. Let me mention just one more. Uh, we need to have decomposition by strict support, which means that um, the uh, filtered D module is um, uh, required to decompose as a direct sum where each object uh, does not have any uh, sub sheaves or sub objects or quotient objects that are supported on the proper subset of its support. Okay, plus semi simple decomposition and so on. Right? So, so these are special conditions that are imposed in order to call something a Hodge module, just like in the world of variations of Hodge structure. Um, we can be more precise. There are pure Hodge modules. Uh, there, one can put polarizations on these, so there are polarizable pure Hodge modules. There are mixed Hodge modules, and so on. Okay, but what I do want to emphasize more is actually the very special properties of Hodge modules that are of interest for the for the problems that I proposed, and especially there is one key feature that I want to highlight here, namely that Hodge modules satisfy a number of vanishing theorems and have positivity properties that um, are similar and in fact extend those of canonicals and canonical and relative canonical bundles in birational geometry. There is one main theorem that's the starting point here. This is already, uh, this is due to Saito in his original work. Um, on a smooth projective variety, um, if we consider any Hodge module whatsoever and um, also we fix an ample line bundle, then there is this vanishing of hypercohomology uh, for all the associated graded objects of the Deram complex coming from this filter D module time, uh, twisted by the sample line bundle in positive degrees. Right? So this is very much a Kodaira theorem-like looking statement. You know, when you have some object which when twisted with an ample line bundle has vanishing higher cohomology. It's just that this might seem at the beginning like a very mysterious object. I mean, they could be quite daunting in this uh, very abstract setting. Right, so I want to next give a bunch of examples, the simplest examples I can think of geometrically, where you'll see that this recovers uh, many of the vanishing theorem that we're very familiar with in birational geometry. Okay, so I already hinted to the fact that variations of Hodge structure are Hodge modules. Here the data is given to us. We have a bundle with flat connection. We have the Hodge filtration. Uh, various theorems in Hodge theory tell us that uh, this is indeed a Hodge module. 
I'll just restrict my attention to the trivial Hodge module because this is already very interesting, right? So the trivial variation of Hodge structure, or if you want, uh, the underlying D module is, uh, is just the structure sheaf of X with usual differentiation. And then the filtration is the trivial filtration, namely it's zero in negative degrees and it's constant equal to OX in non-negative degrees. So this means that there's only one non-trivial associated graded piece here. If you write down the Durham complex and look at all the associated graded pieces, they are just sheaves, in fact, the sheaves of holomorphic forms shifted by the appropriate degree, right? So it's not so hard to see if you, if you go back to the site of vanishing theorem and you write it down in this case that we recover precisely the Kodara Nakano vanishing theorem, right? For the canonical bundle, this is Kodara vanishing. For the other bundles of holomorphic forms, this is the Nakano generalization of that, okay? The next example I want to talk to is this localization along the hypersurface that I mentioned earlier. So I, I explained that this is naturally a D module. In fact, it is a Hodge module. It's this time what's called a mixed Hodge module. It's the push forward by the open embed of the trivial Hodge module by the open embedding from the complement of this hypersurface. And so as I said, because of, this, because of this fact, it acquires this natural filtration, which we call the Hodge filtration which I suggested is the right thing to consider. However, it's, it's a very difficult object to study. In fact, it's going to be one of the, um, the key points of my talk. But we do understand it um, in the first instance where it's non-zero. So for F0 on this localization, we know that up to twist by this Lyman low x of d, it is a gadget that's very familiar to algebraic geometers. It's called the multiplier ideal. It's, in fact, the multiplier ideal of the Q divisor 1 minus epsilon d, where epsilon is a very, very small rational number. Okay, these are objects that are defined by means of resolution of singularities. I'll come back to them a little bit later. But for now, just suffice it to say that these are ubiquitous tools in birational geometry. They're used kind of all the time um, you know, in proving um, theorems these days. So in particular, here, if we concentrate on the associated grade on the drum complex, then uh, there appears this twist by omega x. So Saito vanishing becomes another well-known vanishing theorem, namely natal vanishing for multiplier ideals. And there's a final instance that I want to discuss, and that's the, um, the case of projective morphisms. And as I said, I will restrict to smooth varieties for simplicity. So x and y are both assumed to be smooth in this discussion. Um, here, the main result to mention is a decomposition theorem due to Saito. This really is an extension of the famous um, bellinson bernstein delin decomposition theorem in topology. Um, it's an extension to this world of Hodge modules, and I'm focusing on the D module part. And in fact, I'm only focusing on the trivial uh, Hodge module here on X. So this says something about the push forward of the trivial Hodge module. Now, this push forward is, from the very beginning, an operation that makes sense only in the derived category of filtered D modules on Y. And the statement is, first of all, that this object decomposes into the direct sum of this, its cohomologies in this derived category. So each one of them is a filtered D module um, MIF. And moreover, that in fact, each of these is actually a Hodge module. It's what's called a pure Hodge module on Y. OK, so this is Saito's statement. Um, these are hard to describe at the boundary. Of course, we're looking at variations of Hodge structure where the morphism is smooth, but otherwise they're quite hard to describe at the boundary. But just like for a variation of Hodge structure, if you look at the lowest graded piece, these are always the uh, higher direct images of uh, the canonical bundle on X. And so Saito's theorem becomes another well-known fact in birational geometry. It's Collar's theorem on uh, vanishing for higher direct images of dualizing sheaves. And in fact, the whole package recovers uh, Collar's important uh, results in this direction. Okay. There's one more thing that I want to highlight. This is not about vanishing. This is about positivity. There are, um, there, there, um, you know, in the study of variations of Hodge structures, starting with Griffiths, um, there is this fact that positivity comes into the picture automatically. I mean, there, um, you know, Griffiths studied the curvature of Hodge metrics on Hodge bundles. And then this was gradually improved by various people in you know, more and more general settings, like Fujita, Kawamata, Fivek, Zuo. And um, 
There is a result of this sort in the world of Hodge modules, something that I proved together with Lei Vu, um, and it it's says the following. So this is a little bit more technical. Uh, for any polarizable pure Hodge module with strict support X, so you should think of this as just the natural extension of a variation of Hodge structure from an open set in X. Um, you can look at these um, maps that are induced from the Durham complex, right? When passing to the associated graded. These, these are sometimes called the uh, generalized Kodara Spencer maps. And the statement is that the dual of the kernel of each such map is what's called a weakly positive sheaf. A weakly positive sheaf, I mean, these, this is a very important notion that was introduced by Fivag um, in birational geometry. It's, you know, you can think of it as a higher rank. Uh, generalization of the notion of a, um, a pseudo-effective line bundle, or if you want, you know, a generalization of you know generically having a metric of uh, semi-positive curvature. Okay, so um, okay, so there are also there's also inherent positivity on many of the Hodge modules that we consider, and now the game is the following, right? You see in these special examples we recover lots of you know, well-known facts in birational geometry for canonical bundles, for variations of Hodge structure, and so on. The game is to try to consider other more abstract Hodge modules, maybe go deeper into the Hodge filtration, or cons consider some abstract Hodge modules that are still naturally associated to some very concrete geometric problem, and try to get something out of these theorems um, in those settings. Okay. There are two main constructions that I want to focus on that I use a lot in my work. Um, which um, come from this framework. Uh, one of them is the notion of Hodge ideals associated with Q divisors. And the other one is you know, these Hodge modules that I described together with some graded system that arise from the study of families of varieties. And I'd like to discuss each of them um, individually. I'll spend a little bit of time on each one of these pieces. Okay? So let me start with uh, Hodge ideals. Uh, this is all joint work with Mitch Amostaza, everything I say in this part. And here we're going back to, um, to this localization along a hypersurface. Let me assume for simplicity that the hypersurface is reduced, and later on I'll say a few words about what can be done uh, more generally. Um, so we decided that this is a um, mixed Hodge module, and so it has this Hodge filtration F. And um, like I said, it's, it's quite hard to understand, you know, to compute it, but we do know one general fact, namely that it's always contained in the pole order filtration. This is a filtration by line bundles, and we're looking at coherent sheaves here, so automatically each one of these sheaves can be written as the line bundle x of k plus 1d times some coherent sheaf of ideal that we call ik of d, and we, we name these the, um, you know, the Kate Hodge ideal associated to the, uh, to the hypersurface d. Okay, so as I mentioned, I mean, as I proposed, um, this is sort of the right filtration to look at here in order to, um, to say something about the singularities of the divisor, to say something about the Hodge theory of the, of the complement, if you want, and so on. So we, we showed, together with Mustaza, we showed a number of results about these Hodge ideals. I just collected some of the main ones in uh, one long theorem. Okay, so I've already mentioned that uh, the, uh, the zeroth one, so at the beginning of the Hodge filtration, this was also proved by Saito, a different method, uh, long before us. Um, I0 is the multiplier ideal of a Q divisor. Okay, so these are ideal sheaves that are defined in terms of resolution of singularities. Um, they're connected to the study of singularities of pairs, and this particular one is very interesting because its triviality is precisely equivalent to the notion of uh, having a log canonical pair. This was actually one of the main motivations for starting this study. Okay, so basically going deeper into the sequence of ideals because trying to give a more and more refined study of such uh, notions. It's kind of an abstract nonsense here that these, uh, these ideals determine a more classical piece of Hodge theory, namely Dallin's Hodge filtration on the singular cohomology of the complement of the hypersurface. Um, and going back to singularities, we can show that um, these Hodge ideals are all trivial if and only if the divisor is smooth. So this was guessed by Hodge theorists in the guise of this equality here, that it's the only case when the Hodge filtration is always equal to the pole order filtration. Okay. Um, 
Now, going back to, I mean, I mean, still in this world of uh, what it means, you know, what triviality gives, we saw that for I0, this is equivalent to the notion of log canonical pairs. And in fact, um, this is also the same as saying that the divisor D has Dubois singularities. If you look at the higher Hodge ideal and you require the triviality of any of them, then um, one can show that uh, D has to be normal with rational singularities. This is kind of the next nicest, uh, nicest um, category of singularities that we can look at. So now the main statements are these points five and six. This is really the engine for applications. First of all, there are local non-triviality criteria for these ideals in terms of the multiplicity of a point on D. Okay, just some explicit bounds for non-triviality. And I should have said here, there are also some triviality criteria in terms of invariance on resolution of singularities, discrepancies of divisors on resolution of singularities. This is where kind of a novel look at these ideals, this is what it brings, a novel look at these ideals by means of resolution of singularities. So we have an alternative definition in terms of resolution, just like with multiplier ideals, and this is one of its most fruitful uh, consequences. On the other hand, Hodge theory gives us a global fact that on projective varieties, the Hodge ideals always have, have vanishing theorems, just like Nadal vanishing for I0. There's a vanishing theorem for all Hodge ideals that comes from, you know, basically from Saito's vanishing theorem. And then for those who are familiar with the theory of multiplier ideals, there are many other results that are analogous to the theory of those you know, something like inversion of a junction, semi-continuity theorems. But surprisingly, we only know how to, uh, to do this by looking at D-module theory and the V-filtration and not using resolution of singularities in this case. Okay. And um, we've recently been able to extend this to, um, to general Q-divisors. So there's, you know, I mean, the, it's a very similar picture, not in all respects. In most respects, it's very similar, but quite a bit more complicated. But there are Hodge ideals that are associated with Q-divisors. If you work in birational geometry, you'll immediately recognize that it's not, I mean, it's necessary to extend the theory to Q-divisors in order to get good applications. In fact, this is just a step. It is necessary to extend it much further than this, this to arbitrary subschemes with coefficients. We're working on this. Uh, but in any case, this is what we can do up to now. And, um, I described this in some detail in the proceedings, uh, you know, the paper for the proceedings here. Um, but it's already quite important for applications, and one of them is the bound on the, uh, on the largest root of the reduced bernstein sato polynomial that I, um, I uh, mentioned earlier. So this answers some questions of Lichting and Kolar and so on. Um, anyway, this is a direction that I won't uh, get into uh, too much here. Um, but, um, I do, want to, um, I do want to say a bit more about the, um, you know, the, the story um, uh, regarding uh, Hodge modules associated to... Ah, sorry, um, before that, <laughs> I, um, I, want to, I, want to say a bit, I want to say a bit about how these two criteria together, how these two properties together apply in practice. And I just chose the simplest possible example I can do, I can choose, namely, an application to theta divisors and abelian varieties. Okay, um, so this again is precisely this mix mixture of local criteria and global vanishing that's uh, um, you know, uh, brought into play here. Okay, here's the theorem. If you have an irreducible principally polarized abelian variety of dimension G, um, and if we assume that the theta divisor has isolated singularities, so such abelian variety form a large open set in the moduli space of all abelian varieties with, um, with the singular theta divisor, then the multiplicity of every point on the theta divisor is at most a dimension plus one over two. Um, this, um, I mean, it's a, this problem has a very long uh, history and I can't really do it any justice. Uh, let me just say that there is a general result, an earlier result due to Collar, which tells us that it's always true that the multiplicity um, of every point on a theta divisor is at most g. In fact, I should say this is proved by showing that what we call I0 here, the multiplier ideal, is trivial. Or in other words, that this pair here is log-canonical. And that automatically implies bounds of this sort. 
However, it's been conjecture, it's a folklore conjecture in the area that one should be able to do better exactly this bound here in the case of irreducible principle with polarized abelian varieties. This means, for instance, that the theta divisor is irreducible. And so we can, for now, do this in the case of isolated singularities. By the way, it is, this is an optimal bound. Equality can be achieved in, you know, on some, um, say, um, Jacobians of hyperliptic curves of odd degree or in a special case on uh, intermediate Jacobians of cubic threefolds. So what's the idea here? We can, in fact, exploit only the Hodge ideal I1 for getting a bound like this. First of all, if we assume that the theorem is not true, so if we have points of higher multiplicity, then this general local criterion that I was mentioning earlier tell us, tells us that I1 is non-trivial. In fact, not just that, but it tells us that it's pretty deep. It's contained in the square of the ideal of the point on the abelian variety. Okay? On the other hand, there's the vanishing theorem for Hodge ideals, and it, for abelian varieties, it takes uh, quite a special form. It's, um, it's, it involves only the line bundle um, O of 2 theta on the abelian variety. Okay, so there is some kind of vanishing for I1. Um, and then I1 is contained in the square of the maximal ideal, but the quotient of these two sheaves is supported in dimension zero because of this assumption of isolated singularities. So that also has vanishing automatically. So this sort of vanishing transfers into some kind of vanishing for the square of the maximal ideal at the point. And by some tricks that are typical for abelian varieties, you can then deduce this sort of classical sounding statement that the linear system 2 theta separates tangent vectors on the abelian variety. But this is well known to be false. You know, two theta, the study of 2 theta is the study of the Kummer map for uh, principally polarized abelian varieties. And this is known to be always ramified at the two torsion points of A. Okay? And in fact, um, you can do asymptotically in the genus, you can do much better than this. Um, and that can be obtained by um, using all the higher Hodge ideals and then taking the limit as k goes to infinity. Okay? There is no such good tool as the Kummer map, but there are some other things called Sashadri constants and so on that. Um, help in, uh, in giving better asymptotic bounds for the multiplicities of points and theta divisors. Okay, so this is kind of a quick um, example of how uh, local criteria and vanishing come together. Okay, now let me, let me move on to um, uh, what I was saying earlier. Now, I'd like to look at Hodge modules that arise from, uh, from projective morphisms. And this time the work is uh, with, with Christian Schnell, um, perhaps let will see, maybe I'll mention other things at the very end. Um, so I want to set up the, um, the picture first. I'm looking at a morphism of smooth projective varieties. And I fix an ample line bundle on the base, something positive. And then I'd like to concentrate on line bundles of this form, right? So the relative canonical bundle of the family times the negative of this ample line bundle pulled back to, to the family X, okay? And I don't want to necessarily assume that uh, this line bundle has global sections, but I do want to assume that after some generically finite cover. Okay, so I want to assume this condition star that there exists some smooth projective variety Z and the generically finite cover such that, such that this line bundle acquires sections there. So typically, you'll have um, some sort of cyclic covering construction followed by, uh, by some resolution of singularities of something of this sort. Okay? And then the original morphism F, which is what we'll always want to study, to understand, followed by this generically finite cover, leads to another morphism H, you know, this auxiliary morphism H. And now I want to use the, um, you know, the Hodge module construction that I explained earlier in an example for this new morphism H, right? In this very special setting of um, the push forward of the trivial Hodge module from, uh, from the family Z. So as I said, there's a decomposition theorem. Um, the, which provides us with all these filtered D modules, which are again Hodge modules, pure Hodge modules on the base. In fact, I only want to focus on M0, which we can think of as being the Hodge module, the pure Hodge module extension of the variation of Hodge structure on the um, middle cohomology of the smooth fibers of this morphism. Okay? I want to point out that you know, even if this original morphism were smooth, this new mapping here can acquire singularities, so it's quite a bit more complicated than, um, 
Um, and you need to appeal to this construction even if you start with a smooth family. Okay? So beyond this, there's a very beautiful construction uh, that comes from work of uh, Fiva Gansuo. This is, this is um, very important inspiration for us. Um, it's a construction that there requires more transversality conditions, but we can make a bit more general by using this theory of Hodge modules. And this construction provides a graded submodule inside the, the total associated graded of this filter D module here. These should be thought of, um, I haven't emphasized this point earlier, but uh, when you pass to the full associated graded, you can think of these as being sheaves on the cotangent bundle of the manifold that you're looking at. So really, you can imagine some sheaves here on the cotangent bundle of the, um, of the base Y. And what's nice about this graded submodule is that rem it remembers all the data that we put into this picture. So uh, for instance, this G is nice away from the singular locus of the original mapping F, which, as I said, is what we want to study, right? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so um, this has some smooth locus, and we denote by D the locus where the, the complement, the locus where the map isn't smooth. Uh, this new construction is very nice away from this D, meaning that all the GK are torsion-free sheaves there. Moreover, um, the kind of the starting point for this system G um, is precisely the ample line bundle that I considered at the beginning. And furthermore, um, I said that the Hodge module itself has very nice properties, right? It has vanishing theorems for the Durham complex. It has this weak positivity properties for... Um, for the kernels of Kodara Spencer maps, this subsystem G remembers, for instance, the weak positivity. I mean, inherits some, some basic pro positivity properties from the Hodge modules that we're considering in the picture. And so, if you come up with such an object, you're essentially guaranteed to impose really strong conditions on the base of the family or on other objects that are associated to this family. The question is, when does such a gadget exist? Or if you want, the question is, when do we have this property star? And I'm sorry that I keep going back here, but uh, when can we realize this property star that these bundles have um, global sections after pullback? So you can understand this intuitively a little bit. This is a positivity property on the family, right? It says that basically, you know, some, let's say, powers of the relative canonical bundle, they dominate uh, positive objects on the base. Okay, there are two main situations when um, um, that we can do this, I mean, at least that I want to mention in this lecture. One of them is to simply take X to be a variety of general type. And then, for simplicity, let's take F to be its Albanese map. So just so that we can match the holomorphic one-forms here with the holomorphic one-forms here. And now it's almost by the definition of a variety of general type that condition star is satisfied powers of the canonical bundle dominate pretty much anything you want, we can easily realize that condition star. And so we have this gadget G that I was explaining, that I was um, mentioning earlier, this kind of subsystem of the associated graded of the Hodge module. This has two key properties. First of all, so again, I'm thinking of it as a sheaf on the cotangent bundle. Its support um, lives here. It's um, now we're looking at an abelian variety. Why is it an abelian variety? So uh, the cotangent bundle is trivial. Here we have the uh, holomorphic one forms of X. And this support is actually contained in the image of the following interesting locus, right? You have the, uh, the set of pairs point and one form on X such that the one form vanishes at the point. And in fact, so this support is contained in the, in the image of that set. This is a completely general property of morphisms. It has nothing to do with this particular situation. It's just a fact, okay? Um, however, what's really special about this situation is that this support also has to dominate the space of holomorphic one forms by the second projection here. And this is tricky. I mean, this uses some, this uses all these vanishing theorems for Hodge modules in a rather subtle way. In fact, we need some generalizations of these vanishing theorems in the case of abelian varieties, maybe some generic vanishing theory and so on. But you can get this by using vanishing theorems and putting these two statements together, together you immediately obtain this, um, this fact that um, if X is of general type, every one form has to, has to vanish at some point. That's exactly this domination of the second projection. Um, this was a conjecture of uh, Haken and Kovac 
and um, also Luo and Zhang. And as I said, um, one, along these lines, one can also give more refined statements in arbitrary Kodara dimension. Okay, there's another, um, there's another situation in which um, we can apply this machinery, um, and this is um, when F is a family when the fibers are of general type, or in fact, more technically, um, you can consider families where the geometric generic fiber has what's called a good minimal model. And moreover, we assume that the fibers vary maximally in birational moduli. So I put this in quotes. I mean, you can think about moduli families, for instance, of canonically polarized variety, varieties, but um, this is a more general notion. Roughly speaking, the general fiber can only be birational to countably many other fibers in that family. Okay? And now it's very difficult to see that condition star holds, but it does. And this requires really deep work in birational geometry of Fiveg, uh, Kolar, uh, Kavamata. Um, it requires this beautiful cyclic covering, uh, no, sorry, fiber product construction of Fiveg. Um, so the family has to be modified while keeping the base fixed. At the end of the day, we can reach a situation where this condition star holds, and we can produce all the machinery of Hodge modules and subsystems and so on. And this time, it's not vanishing that comes into play, but rather the positivity that's inherited from the world of variations of Hodge structure. Namely, um, first of all, um, I mean, all the properties of the system G that I mentioned earlier, you know, you start with something um, ample at the very beginning, and then you have this weak positivity of um, kernels of Kodara Spencer mappings. Um, putting all this together, and finally, this criterion of Campana and Paun, which came up in the world of um, you know, um, algebraic, I mean, integrability of foliations that uh, Carolina mentioned yesterday, one can deduce that uh, the base of such a family um, is a, a variety of log general type. Okay, so uh, this, this, I remind you, is the locus where the family is not smooth. So if you want, it's a compactification of a smooth family of varieties of general type or varieties with, um, um, with um, good minimal models. And the conclusion, is that such a base is a variety of log general type. This is a sort of an algebraic version of hyperbolicity. Um, this this uh, extends a statement of a hyperbolicity conjecture due to Fiveg in the case of canonically polarized varieties that was known before by, um, you know, finalized by uh, Kampan and Paun. And so it works in this uh, general setting. And in fact, more recently, um, we're also able to, um, to um, prove the fact that in this, in this general setting of such families, um, the complement of the divisor D is also what's called Brody hyperbolic. So these two notions are in fact connect, connected by a conjecture of Lang that is not uh, yet known. And I said along these lines that are also, um, there's also progress in the direction of um, Kobayashi hyperbolicity. Okay, so... Um, this is, th th these are some of the um, uh, applications that I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, um, and I think I'd like to stop here. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions for the speaker? <laughs> sure, there are. <laughs> I think clear. you were so clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And late in the day. Thank you. Oh, yes, please. I think Obayashi hyperbolicity, as far as I understand, is known if you assume that the fibers are minimal of general type. Right? So you have to impose minimality conditions. And in fact, until recently, we also knew how to do Brody hyperbolicity in that setting. But just very, very recently, we realized that, in fact, it works in general by simplifying some arguments. But for Kobayashi hyperbolicity, you still need to use uh, minimality for the fibers of the family. Yeah, this is work due to Deng, I should say. Yeah, Deng. Yeah. So, so one way to state your theorem about uh, holomorphic one forms, yes. um, the fact that they vanish is to say that uh, you look at certain foliations which are on the torus and how they are tangent 
to the, to the variety. Okay? But there are other foliations which are globally defined on tori and have no singularities. Mm. You know these turbulent foliations? Or maybe, ex okay. And I, it, know I think it would be this. nice to see whether your techniques applied to the position of the variety yeah. with respect to the other so foliations. I vaguely know about this, that uh, people studying foliation theory have been using uh, this theorem in particular, or results of this sort. I think um, Stéphane Druel, for instance, has used our theorem to study foliations, but I'm not sure that it was really in this context. I'm, I don't want to uh, <laughs> say something wrong now, but I know that it's useful for foliation theory. That's right. Um, multiplayer uh, ideals have been uh, intensely studied also in characteristic P. Are there variants of Hodge ideals? Uh, no, in I, I, I know. I get this question quite a lot, but I, I don't think that um, we, we're anywhere near a theory like this in characteristic P. And uh, even though there are analogs of D modules, I'd say, you know, Cartier modules and so on. I'm not sure what the, what the Hodge filtration would be or something similar to the Hodge filtration. And it's somehow crucial in this picture, right? I mean, this is basically what Saito brought, uh, you know, compared to, you know, I was mentioning the decomposition theorem, you know, compared to the topological picture, it's really, really crucial to have this Hodge filtration for everything that I'm saying here, you know, and these associated graded qu quotients. And I really don't know yet what, uh, maybe someone who's sitting right next to you has some ideas about this. But yeah. Are there any other questions? I don't seem to see any. So well, let's thank the speaker again. All right, thank you.